Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about how to design envelope liners for wedding invitations. Um, here are four examples of some of the ones we're going to talk about today, so let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer, and I love to teach people how to design wedding invitations and run successful, profitable businesses. Envelope liners are my favorite and my most requested upgrade to my invitation suites by my clients. So it's very important to understand how to design these. Here are four common designs. These are all available as downloadable uh, DIY templates in my Etsy shop for $5, in addition to tons of other designs if you want to uh, use those. However, we're going to talk about how to design your own today as well. So I would say the most common, simplest way to design an envelope liner is using this all over pattern kind of method. It doesn't really matter where the cuts go, which is going to be helpful for you in the design process. Um, it doesn't really matter where the envelope is. It's kind of an all over simple pattern and it's so really, really beautiful. I have a ton of examples of this. Um, this one is where we have a design coming in from the top, which is pretty cool. Maybe my favorite design, maybe. I don't know. I like all the different ones, but this one might be my favorite. It's kind of cool. It looks like things are raining in. And what I like about this one is if it gets torn on the crease, you still get most of the design at the top. This is an example of a single image design. So this could be a dog portrait, a venue portrait. There's so many different examples. I use a cactus here. Um, and then this design right here looks insane, but it's the opposite of this one. So it's basically what's coming up out of the envelope. And I've made, I'll show you how to do this. I've made this little template to kind of give me an idea of where the bottom of the visible part of the envelope is. So you can really make it look a lot less insane now. They look like they're actually sprouting out of the envelope. Um, and you'll just wanna make sure that you you continue to design a little bit past this one so you can see, let's see if I change this to clear. You can see I've, con I've uh, made it go a little bit further than that actual envelope design. And I've tested this one. I was able to actually print this one, cut it and test it on one of my envelopes so I can tell that it works. So how do you go about figuring out how you could do this? Um, the main thing is we're going to talk about where you're going to get your envelopes and then how you're going to cut them. And that will influence your design a lot. So there's a lot of different shapes of envelopes. If I order from three different suppliers, even if they're all this kind of uh, what's called Euro flap or deep V flap, um, they're still going to be slightly different. And then there's other things like a less deep V flap. It's called baronial. Um, there's also a straight across flap. There's square envelopes. So there's a lot of different shapes and you need to just make sure that whatever you're doing can fit into the shape of the envelope. There's two really easy ways to do that. The first is of course, just getting a template. This template came from the people who are printing and cutting my liners. So I know that it is going to be perfect. And I know exactly where it's going to fit. Um, and then I've made these templates for the DIY download versions um, out of this exact template. So wherever you're getting your envelopes from, email them and say, hey, do you have an envelope liner template? If they don't, then you can kind of make your own, but I will say that you wanna be a little bit less specific on the design. So if you're doing this method, I might not go with a design that needs to be in a specific place, but something like a design that fills the entire envelope and doesn't really matter exactly where it's cut. Um, something like this, where it's a uh, an all over pattern design, doesn't matter too much if the template is exactly right because you're going to get a little variation. So what I've done is take a picture of this envelope. I'm going to make sure it's not crooked. And then what I like to do is draw a five and a half by seven and a half square here. Um, we will, let's see, I'm going to fill it and also rotate it. I did it the wrong way. <laughs> so this is kind of your sizing template just to make sure you get it right. So then you'll want to size your envelope picture up to basically as close to that as you can get. This is actually pretty close. You can see that it's distorted a tiny bit. So that's just an example of how this picture method isn't going to get you exactly where you want to be. From here, you can draw your shape. So you have um, this rectangle already. You can go ahead and make it a little bit smaller so that it fits inside the envelope. And then you can use uh, your shape builder tool here in Illustrator to add the additional triangle portion to the top and you'll want to make it so that, I mean, you can even just use a, uh, add an anchor point here. 
You can even just add an anchor point here in the middle and use that uh, to make your triangle and then you can round your corner pretty easily. So this is pretty decent. This will give you a fairly close approximation of it. Um, it's not going to be 100% exact though, uh, but it's pretty good. And then you can even round these corners if you'd like to, uh, just completely up to you. Round these and that will of course also round those. That's okay, you can square them off later. Um, so you have a pretty good approximation of your template and then to use it, you just unfill it and then fill it with whatever you want. And this is also how I made the envelope shape template here. I just use the shape builder to trace out this shape right here and size it to seven and a quarter wide because that's the size of the envelope. So I knew it would be an accurate size estimate. Now, I also mentioned you have to pay attention to where you're getting this cut. So if you're getting it die cut from a company and they've sent you a template, you know it will come to you cut exactly like this, the rounded corners. Um, your templates are gonna be 100% accurate. If you're making your own die cut, then you'll be able to make the template and you know it will, act, it will cut exactly um, as you did because you die cut that. Um, I don't think it's that efficient to make your own die cut for a standard size envelope because you can always find companies that do have them. This one I'm getting printed at Princewell. I have a code, a link in the description of this video that will get you $25 off your first order with them. And I always order all my envelope liners from them. They fit really well in Princewell envelopes, cards and pockets envelopes, and also announcement converters envelopes, which are three of my favorite um, envelope so suppliers. So I know these liners are going to fit perfectly. If you're getting them uh, cut from a different location or you need a, a different shape that you can't find somewhere, you can generally get your envelope liner stack cut. And that's what I used to do before a lot of companies started offering them. Um, some people even individually cut them. And that's kind of how these downloadable templates are set up. And that's why they have straight lines. So you can put 150, 200, however many you want in a stack, get them cut at FedEx, or if you have a guillotine cutter or something, or if you have a local printer that will cut them for you, um, and they can cut them right on these lines and they're ready to go. So that's what your template can be used for. Um, you can either print it on the piece, or if you've done it in the picture way where it's not quite as accurate, then you might wanna print it on the top piece um, or just print it on one piece of paper and then have your liners printed here so that if the design is a little bit off or shifts a little, um, it's okay and it's not going to affect everything. If you're going to do something where you have it stack cut, then you'll wanna make sure your design comes a little further off the edge. So you can print this on an eight and a half by 11 um, and you can do the pattern on the entire piece of paper. That's really the easiest way to do it. Um, and then just print your template where you want them to cut on one piece, put it over the top, they'll chop the whole thing. Um, so if you're doing something like that, if you're having them individually cut or if you're individually cutting them, then you'll wanna be a little bit more careful about your design. So if you do something like this, you want the design to extend a little further, give it a little bit more of a bleed so that if it shifts a little or you cut a little bit off, there's no, uh, you're not missing any design. If you were to do a set design like this, that's kind of centered or needs to be within the constraints of the envelope liner, um, I would recommend doing it a little bit smaller, um, making it such that the margins don't matter as much. This type of design is gonna be a little more difficult if you're not getting them die cut because you just kind of don't know if the cut is going to be perfect. Um, so it's a little bit more difficult, but if you're individually cutting them, you know, you might be able to pay a little bit more attention to that. Um, and this type of design honestly will probably work fine. Um, even if you are stack cutting them or something, your template, you'll just want to make sure that this part of the template is correct and that you do some testing with it before you do all of them. Uh, because it will, you know, if it's off, if your envelope actually comes to here, you're going to get kind of that awkward space there. So you want to make sure you design covers down to where the envelope is going to be. So I'm just going to scroll through a few options. So you can see all the different possibilities we have with design. Um, there's a lot of really cool things you can do if you're starting from scratch. Definitely that all over the pattern is going to be one of the simplest type of designs to do and make sure you get right every time. I have another video on how to attach your envelope liners and if you're using one of our DIY templates, I have another video on how to use those as well. So I um, highly recommend checking out some of these designs to get some inspiration and let me know how your first envelope liner designs go. Thanks everybody.